dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. Before the shadow starts today's adventure... The shadow, mysterious character who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. As the shadow... Cranston is gifted with hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so that they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's story, The Chess Club Murder. Shrevey, will you drop me off at the Black Rook Chess Club and then drive Miss Lane home? Ah, uh, Chess Club, Chess Club, Miss Lane home, Miss Lane. Oh, sure, sure, Miss Cranston. Well, why the hurry to get to this club, Lamont? I'm due there right now for a director's meeting, Margo. Oh, oh, Lamont, that's the dullest thing I've ever heard of. A director's meeting at a chess club. Well, there's nothing dull about it. <laughs> you see, there's quite a few going on down there. May split the club wide open. Oh, it sounds momentous. The trouble, dear. Did someone try to change the color of the square? All right, all right. Have your fun. Well, what else could a chess club feud be about? Well, it's a long story, Margot. Hey, uh, Mr. Clanson, hey. Yes, yeah, Shrevey. Can you see that there new sign on the Evening Star building? Look at it. All the late news is spelled out by them moving electric lights. Yes, I've seen it, Shrevey. Yeah. Ain't science fantastic on it? <laughs> <laughs> it certainly is. <laughs> oh, by the way, Margot, that, uh, that innovation is the work of Raymond Packer, the publisher of the star. Oh, he is one of my opponents in the chess club feud. He's the leader of the faction that wants Mark, to have... look. Huh? That sign is spelling out something about the chess club. What? Well, so it is. Uh, slow down, Shrevey. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Judge Harold Walker, president of the Black Rook Chess Club, was just this minute found in the library of the club murdered. Shrevey, take me to the chess club at once. Will you tell me why such an exclusive club is quartered in that dilapidated building? Well, the founder started the club way down here by the waterfront years ago when they and their careers were younger. Well, why haven't they ever moved? For sentimental reasons. That's one of the currents of friction that started the feud. The younger element wants a new modern clubhouse. Oh, I don't blame them. In here, Margot. Right. Well, I guess the elevator's upstairs. Have to ring for it. Is that little wire cage an elevator shaft? Yes. Oh, it looks like one of those cash carriers they used to have in department stores. All right, all right. <laughs> Here he comes. Who runs it? Diamond Jim Brady? No, Margo. And Lillian Russell is not our hat check girl. <laughs> Where's that dog? He's probably in the elevator. It belongs to old Andy, the operator. <laughs> Evening, Mr. Craston. Evening, Andy. Uh, hello there, Blackie. Oh, yeah. Blackie, quiet. Oh. It's all right, man. He won't harm you. Well, I... I He's I don't... just not very friendly with strangers, Margo. I suppose you've heard about what happened, Mr. Cranston. Yes, I have, Andy. Is Commissioner Western upstairs? No, sir. The police haven't arrived yet. You see, the body was just found a few minutes ago. But how did the news get out? We read a bulletin reporting the murder on that new sign on the store building. Aye, that was Mr. Packer's work, ma'am. Well, how did Raymond Packer get the news out so fast? From his office upstairs in the club. He has a newfangled machine there that sends news right onto that sign. Oh, I see. Uh, go ahead into the elevator, Mark. Quiet, Blackie. Oh, uh, Andy, uh, do they know who killed the judge? No, sir. I don't think they ever will. Well, why do you say that? There are many who hated Judge Walker. And many like me who are glad that he's dead. Well, I, uh, I wouldn't talk that way to the police if I were you, Andy. They might misunderstand. They can't pin anything on me. Watch your step, Mr. Cranston. What do you mean, Andy? 
I mean getting out of the elevator. Cranston! Cranston! Oh, hello, Packer. You uh, know Miss Lane? Oh, yes. How are you? Yes, how do you do? Uh, where's the body? In the library. Dr. Layton, the medical examiner, was in the club and the judge was found dead. He's in there with him now. Who discovered the murder? Robert Dowd. He found the judge seated in his usual chair, bullet had pierced his temple. Obviously, the killer used a silencer. Oh. Have you seen the corpse? Why, sure. I even took pictures. That was very ethical. Now, listen, Cranston, as owner of the Star Bulletin, I'm a newspaper man first, last, and always. Even though this is my club, my work is my first consideration. Uh, where's Robert Dowd now? Uh, in my office. Say, uh, you haven't seen my new setup here, have you? You mean this news machine of yours? Yes. Come on, here. Take a look at it. Have you met Robert Dowd, Miss Lane? No. How do you do? How do you do? Hello, Mr. Dowd. How do you do, Mr. Cranston? Yeah, now take a look at the setup. A wire service for all the leading news agencies. The stock ticker and my pride and joy, the news machines. Well, it looks like a large typewriter. Well, that's the baby I scooped the town with on the murder story. I typed it directly onto the news belt that encircles my building. Mm, remarkable. Uh, Mr. Dowd, I understand you discovered Judge Walker's body. Yes, that's right. Do you know when he was last seen alive? Yes, about an hour ago. He'd been playing chess with John Lord. Oh, I see. Is Lord still in the club? I believe he is. He's not only in the club, but tomorrow morning he's going to be on the front page of my newspaper as well. Listen to my story for the morning edition. I just dictated it into this machine. According to a statement made last night by Commissioner Weston, John Lord, who was the last person to see Judge Walker alive, will be held for questioning by the police. <laughs> well, there you are. Hacker, you can't print a story like that. Why not, Mr. Dowd? It's unfair. The commissioner hasn't even arrived here yet. Why, everyone in this club knows that Judge Walker and John Lord cordially hated each other, even though they still met over a chessboard. Does that justify your printing an accusation like that? It's news, isn't it? Packer, are you going to crucify an old man just for an exclusive story? Listen, I'm convinced that John Lord knows all about Judge Walker's death. Excuse me. Oh, hello, Dr. Latham. Have you finished examining Judge Walker? Yes. Uh, Packer, what were you just saying about John Lord? I believe, Dr. Latham, that he's implicated in Judge Walker's death. But I'm afraid you're wrong. What do you mean, Doctor? John Lord was just found dead. Stabbed through the heart. Well, that was a highly informative session, Lamont. Yes. Two men murdered and any one of 50 club members could have committed the crime. Make that 51, Margot. Why? What do you mean? Old Andy, the elevator man, is eligible for that list. Well, Lamont, do you seriously suspect old Andy of being the murderer? I can't answer that, Margot, until later on this evening. What's going to happen then? I'm planning to pay a call on the old man. I shall visit him as the shadow. Rocky, what's the matter, boy? What is it? Why are you growling? Be quiet, Blackie. <laughs> what was that? Who laughed? I think you've heard of me, old man. Who's speaking? I can't see anyone. I am called the Shadow. The Shadow? The man who's invisible? That's right. What are you doing here? Why have you come to see me? I'm seeking information. Information about the men who were murdered in the club upstairs. Why have you come to me? Because I believe that you were implicated in the crime. No, that's not true. You didn't like Judge Walker, did you? No, I didn't. Judge Walker tried many times to have me discharged from my job. It was always bothering me. Yes. I'd willingly have killed him if I'd had the nerve. But I didn't do it. Do you think the police would believe that story? No. I guess not. But if I were the murderer, do you think of the taking John Lord's life, too? He was a fine man. A friend of mine. There's no way of proving that friendship now. Look, Mr. Shadow. If you'll only believe me, perhaps I can be of help. How? You've heard the expression, dead men tell no tales. Yes. Well, dead men do tell tales, Mr. Shadow. There's something in Judge Walker's past that proves this saying. What do you mean? I can't tell any more. It's up to you to learn the answer. See here, old man. If you're talking in riddles just to divert suspicion from yourself, you're making a great mistake. 
I'm warning you right now. In due time, the murderer of Judge Walker and John Lord will be brought to justice by the shadow. More from the shadow in just a moment. And now, we return to our drama. Stay in the shadow of this hedge until we reach the house, Margo. Is there anyone living here now, Lamont? I don't believe so. Judge Walker had no family. He lived here alone. What if there's a watchman? Yeah, we'll chance that. What is it you're looking for here, Lamont? I haven't the slightest idea, Margo. This whole thing may be a wild goose chase. Well, then then we're here because old Andy remarked that you should look for something in Judge Walker's past. Exactly. And that's quite an assignment, believe me. Well, Lamont, do you know anything about the house? Well, yes, I've been here several times. I'm looking for the judge's study. That's where he kept all his private papers. But if you don't... Shh, shh, quiet, Margo. What's wrong? Look, inside the room. There's someone there. See the beams of a flashlight? Yes. You'd better wait out here, Margo. I, I'm going inside and confront our fellow marauder as the shadow. <laughs> those lights. I did, Mr. Packer. Oh, where are you? I don't see any. Oh. Oh, I believe I know who is here. It's the shadow, isn't it? That's correct, Mr. Packer. I had a hunch you'd bust in on this case. Just what are you holding behind your back, Packer? Why, uh, it's, uh, it's just a book, that's all. A book? May I see it, please? Why? What interest would you have in it? The same interest that you have, Packer. I believe that we came here seeking the same objective. And that objective can only be that book. Why is it so precious to you? It's uh, it's just a book that I wanted to read. So you came here in the middle of the night to the house of a murdered man to borrow it. Is that it? Yes. That's my story. Can you think of a better one? A much better one. One that implicates you in the murders of Judge Walker and John Lord. Oh, no. You're shooting in the dark now, Shadow. Then how else can you explain your presence here? Lion of duty? I'm a newspaper man, you know. Yes, and I also know that you stop at nothing to manufacture a good story, even murder. You'd have a tough job proving that. Yes, but perhaps possessing that book would help. Now, now, wait a minute. You can't have that. Ah, but I do have it, Mr. Packer, and I intend to keep it. I see. You think you're pretty clever, don't you, Shadow? Well, let me put you straight on one thing. What's that? I didn't kill Judge Walker or John Lord either, but I'm going to beat you at your own game. I'm going to discover their murderer before you do. And when I do, I'll tell my readers just who I outwitted to get the story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Shadow. You'll have to work fast, Packer, very fast. Margot. Margot. Are you out there? Yes. What is it, Lamont? I think I've discovered our clue. What is it? This book. I'll hand it down to you. All right. Murder on a bet by Harold Walker. That's Judge Walker, Margot. He wrote this book many years ago. What is it about? A mystery novel, I suppose. There's no tying it in with the judge's death until we read its contents. One thing, though. Old Andy may have been telling the truth when he said, Dead men do tell tales. Andy, is Mr. Packer in his office? Aye, aye, he's busy working. Here we are. Uh, thank you, Andy. Good evening, Mr. Cranston. Oh, good evening, Dr. Latham. Working for a game? Uh, no, thanks. I'm here to see Raymond Packer. Oh, he's in his office. I heard him talking into the dictaphone a while back. Oh, uh -huh. anything turn up on the murders, Doctor? Has the commissioner discovered any clues? No, I'm afraid not. You know, as medical examiner, I've been on many murder cases, and usually the killer makes one mistake that gives him away. This chap seems to evolve the perfect crime. I wouldn't be too sure of that, Doctor. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to see Packer. Uh, sounds like Packer's still hard at work. Perhaps I'd better... Listen, Dr. Latham. Isn't he repeating the same phrase over and over? Yes, sounds that way. 
That isn't Packer at all. It's his dictaphone machine. What can be wrong? I don't know, but I think we should find out. Packer! Good heavens! He slumped over the desk. Packer! Packer! I'm afraid he's dead, Mr. Clancy. Yes, a stab wound through the heart, the same way John Lord was killed. No sign of the killer's weapon. Wait, Dr. Latham. I have an idea. That machine, that dictaphone, he must have been speaking into it just before he died. Yes. Let's play the record back. It may contain a clue. You're right. Here, now let's see. I wonder... Here's a cut right here. While the police have been fruitlessly combing the town for the perpetrator of the double murder at the chess club, your editor has uncovered a clue that should lead to the solving of the crime. Here it is. I advise the police to learn the nature of the bet between Robert Dowd and... The bet between Robert Dowd and... The... I wonder who the other person was. The one he was about to mention. Yes. I have a feeling, Dr. Latham, that the unnamed person is the murderer. How about Robert Dowd? He's mixed up in it, too. I think it would be worth paying a call on him at once. Yes, go ahead. I'll notify Weston. Good luck, Cranston. Is Mr. Robert Dowd in his apartment, please? I'll ring and find out. Oh, I just remembered. Of course he's in. Another caller just left there. Oh, well, thank you. Who's there? I see no one. Who are you? I believe you might know me as the Shadow. The Shadow. Yes. Yes, I know you. At least by reputation. Then you know that I'm here to learn about the double murder at the chess club. And why do you visit me? Because you have been a party to those murders. You're crazy. Perhaps I should remind you of a certain bet that you made. Does that refresh your memory? Does it? I... No. A bet that employed human lives as at stake? I have proof of this cold-blooded wager, Mr. Dowd. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I see. You've been warned to remain silent. Perhaps by the caller who was just here. I had no caller. You're lying. Those two drinks on your desk. Your visitor's cigarette is still smoldering. This visitor was the man you made the wager with, wasn't he? I'm not going to say a thing. I'd advise you to change your mind on that score. Because you yourself may be the next victim. You're just guessing. You don't know what you're saying. I'll prove to you that I do. You made a bet with this person that he couldn't get away with murder. This plan of murder that your friend followed was taken from a book that was written years ago by Judge Walker. A book called Murder on a Bet. So far, he's followed the storyline exactly. You didn't know this, did you? No. No. Well, for your information, Robert Dowd, the next chapter in this bloody volume is one not yet reenacted, but it deals with the killing of the man who wagered with the murderer. Now, will you admit that you made this bet? Yes. Yes, I... I did make it. But when I made it, I... I never thought that he was serious. I, I thought it was a joke. Believe me, I... Then when... The killing was started. I I was afraid to tell the police. I, I was afraid that I would be... I would be... Down. What's the matter? My breath. I, I can't get my breath. That drink of yours. Something's been put into it. Yes. Yes, that must be it. Your caller did that to silence you, Mr. Dowd, just as I said he would. I, I can't breathe. Who was this caller, Dowd? Tell me who the murderer is. All right. All right. Just one more flight to the chess club. I wonder why Andy didn't answer the elevator buzzer. That's what I want to find out. You suppose another chapter in the book has been played? I hope not. Here we are. All right. Come on in, Margot. I want the lights are out. Yes. Andy. Andy. Where are you? Andy, why don't you... <laughs> Margo. Margo, what... What happened? I don't know. Say, what's that? Yeah. Someone's just thrown a very bright light in her eyes. But who's holding the flashlight? I... I can't see beyond the beam of light. 
Oh, wait a minute, Margot. There's a hand reaching out into the light. Yes. It's holding out a piece of paper. Well, I, I believe we're supposed to take it. Is that right? Is this a message for us to read? He, he doesn't want to play with us, Lamont. No. But he's obligingly putting it in my lap. Well, listen to this, Margot. Your captor, who is covering you both with a revolver, prefers to remain unknown for the present. Watch this paper carefully. It is chemically treated. In just a moment, it will burst into flames. Lamont, that's like the paper they dropped from warplanes to cause incendiary fires. What's the object in his using it? Listen to the rest of this. You'll find out. At the moment this paper ignites, a hundred such pieces of paper will ignite in the basement of this building. A few minutes after that, the building will be a roaring inferno. Lamont, could such a thing happen? Yes, I'm afraid so, Margot. I... Oh, oh. A murderer is taking back his slip of paper. Yes, and look. Look, it has burst into flames. Yes. So now our situation is this. Downstairs at this very moment, the building has caught fire. Soon the smoke and flames will be swirling up the elevator shaft. And we are being held in Raymond Packer's office by a person who is not only our captor, but the perpetrator of the chess club murders. Isn't that right, murderer? Oh, won't you at least speak to us? Oh, I see. One tap is no, two taps yes. Is that right? Well, tell me, murderer, you are the man who bet you could get away with murder, aren't you? You wagered with Robert Dow that no one could catch you if you decided to kill, right? You followed the pattern of Judge Walker's book, which, ironically enough, made him the first victim, and then you killed the others in the same pattern. Who is he, Lamont? Do you know? Yes, I believe I do. I believe that the murderer is Dr. Latham. <laughs> Excellent deduction, Mr. Cranston. Excellent. But you made your discovery too late. Come on, do you smell the smoke? Yes. Fire's coming up the shaft. The flames will soon reach this room. Your time is growing very short. I see, Dr. Latham, that you have even chosen to reenact the final chapter. The killer's taking his own life in a burning building. That's right. Lamont, the smoke is choking me. What are you writing on that typewriter, Cranston? Just my ABCs, Doctor. Nervous habit of mine whenever I'm in a tight spot. Well, stop it. Oh, now, Doctor, you wouldn't begrudge a man who's about to die a little pleasure, would you? Stop it, I say. Oh, very well. That's better. Now, how did you discover my identity, Cranston? Well, old Andy gave me the first clue. He told me of overhearing a discussion of the book Murder on a Bet between you and Judge Walker. I see. That was very careless of me. But old Andy has paid for his revelation. What do you mean? It was necessary for me to kill him, too. Oh, you're mad, Doctor. Mad. I was just following the plan of the book. And that's why you took Robert Dowd's life, too, eh? Yes. Dowd is a very timid man. I was afraid he might welch on our wager. Oh, Lamar, the smoke. You haven't much longer to suffer, young lady. Soon we shall all be wrapped in flames. <laughs> you might be mistaken about that, Dr. Lee. How? <laughs> oh. You recall telling me here earlier this evening <coughs> that a killer usually makes one mistake? Yes, but I haven't. You're wrong, Dr. Latham. What do you mean? You have made a mistake. A very simple mistake. As simple as ABC. What are you talking about? I'm referring to the ABCs that I wrote on this machine that you thought was a typewriter. But in reality, it's Raymond Packer's news machine. No. No. Yes. And your guilt has been read by thousands of people on that sign on the Star Building. Why, you... And now I'll take that gun, Doctor. There we are. Uh, you... You think you've tricked me, don't you? You think you've gained the upper hand? I do. <laughs> Listen. You hear those sirens? Help will soon be here, Dr. Uh, Latham. They won't get me. <laughs> they won't get me, do you hear? No, what's he doing? Come back, Dr. Latham. Come back. He's going out the window. Look on! Oh, no. Margo, if we're going to get out of this trap, we'd better try to meet our rescuers halfway. Oh, Lamont, to think that all those things could happen at a chess club. <laughs> I always told you, didn't I, that it was a very exciting game? Exciting? It's a killer. <laughs> Thank you. 
We'll hear from the shadow again in just a moment. Today's program is based on a story copyrighted by The Shadow Magazine. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Crime does not pay. The Shadow knows. <laughs> this is Ken Roberts.